Hey guys, another one of my homemade guns here. This is one of the first uh, cocklin' open bolt actions I ever built. I built it about 10 years ago, uh, so it's it's a little uh, rudimentary. It, it is kind of unique because I built the, all the trigger parts. I didn't have access to an end mill at the time, so all these cuts I had to do on my lathe with a milling attachment, which is not the best way to do it, but it will work. Um, like I, said, I built it about 10 years ago, but it's just a really accurate gun. Um, you know, several, several sub MOA groups, you know, half inch groups at hundred yards, you know, it's, it's big. The receiver's really long, you know, it, it's, the stock is pretty rough looking, uh, but it's, you know, it's got a neat design in it. Uh, like I said, in the trigger a mechanism, I did it all without a, a, a mill. So I can show you how that works. Uh, it is a, it is a 222 uh, Remington. There's one of, the, uh, one of the bullets right there. And that is the parent case to the 223 or the. The 556 five, um, was real popular in the 50s, 60s. They still make ammo for it. Uh, it is kind of sparse uh, nowadays. It's kind of hard to find. I, I reload mostly for it. Um, but anyways, back to the gun. Uh, of course, I got a loophole scope on there. I didn't build that. Originally, this this gun had a uh, had a had a, 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 a pull off barrel. Like it came off an old old Kimber rifle, old 222 Kimber rifle. Uh, so, you know, it was much longer. So at some point I replaced it with a green mountain barrel, uh, one in 14 twist. And, uh, and I have had better results with this barrel than the original, original barrel. It does have a pretty nice trigger pull on it. A nice, nice crisp trigger. I'm going to let you get a look at some of the lines here. Of course, that stock's really thick. I think all I used was a draw knife and a bandsaw to make it. I got the Packmeyer, oh, like a shotgun style butt pad there. Just an AK grip, uh, grip I modified. Um, of course, I made the trigger guard. And like I said, I, I, I swapped out barrels. I originally had a tapered Kimber barrel. This has a, a, a bull barrel I turned on my lathe. And a very uh, odd um, uh, attachment there for my bipod. Uh, the underside, you can see the trigger The trigger mechanism is, is pretty unique compared to the other ones I built. And that's kind of why I want to share this one because like I, I, I didn't have a uh, an end mill. All this cutting was done with my lathe. But anyways, hey, let's uh, let's go to the range, put a few rounds to it, and then we'll come back, take it apart. All right, guys, the first step, take this thing apart. I'll take the scope off uh, first and the bipod. Uh, there's uh, one screw here, and uh, you have to take the plug out of the AK grip here, and there's a screw that goes uh, up into here. I'll take that out. It's been so long since I took this thing apart, I realized uh, the trigger guard is, uh, is integral into the trigger mechanism. And there's a cross member here uh, to hold it, so you got to take the trigger guard off pull everything out the top. So I got that part off. Like I said, that stock's pretty rudimentary. Until I got in here with a router, you know, like a, a, a manual router, which does not leave nice square holes. I think I did this part with my end mill later. When I got it, it's probably when I put the new barrel on it. And like I said, this, this cross member, uh, I, didn't, I was more worried about uh, making it shoot before I built a, a, a trigger guard for it. Look at this, uh, at this unique trigger mechanism here. Um, again, so I didn't. Have, normally, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd get a big piece of metal and and, uh, and and put them, you know, mill it all out. But you want to talk about a collection of screws and uh, nuts? Uh, so I will, I will take that that thing apart for you. But uh, let me take this off. What you do is you got to take you got to take these screws out uh, here. Well, you got to take this this block off. And take out these screws because there's a screw that runs down these holes that go to the receiver. That's how that part attaches. Let me do that. So I got the trigger housing off here. Um, and this, this little bracket right here has to come out. That's what the AK Chris pistol grip screws into. And there's the hole for the 
one of the, the rear uh, trigger guard. Uh, and I had to back these screws out right here because down in there, oh, I can't see it, but there's a little screw that that uh, that goes into the receiver, front and the back. Um, but yeah, you can see this. You know, I just pull the trigger and it and lowers uh, this catch right here. And that, that catch is connected to the sear. And uh, so there are all sorts of uh, screws and nuts and springs down in there. Um, I'm a little tempted to not take it apart because I, well, I get it back together. Um, I'll tell you what. If you guys want me to take it apart one of these days, leave some comments. I'll take this thing apart for you to see how it works. Uh, but again, it, it's, it's similar to some of my uh, later bolt actions, which reminds me, if if you're new to the channel, uh, please go see some other stuff. This is a really old example of, of the things I make, so don't be, don't be too uh, too judgmental. Um, but let me take the, uh, the the bolt mechanism apart for you. I like a lot of my guns. Uh, the uh, you screw the the back off here, and uh, you take the bolt handle out, and it will, um, and you have to take this sear catch off. Uh, that's what catches uh, the trigger. When you close, it catches it right there, and when you shoot, that's what makes that ha happen. But let me take the bolt handle plug off and this part out and the bolt should slide on out the back. So here's that plug in the back of the receiver. Again, it's, it's there really to, to keep stuff from flying back at your face in case the, the locking lugs broke. And a pretty simple bolt handle here. Uh, one of my early ones. The whole thing is actually a, a Brownells Alumahide. I didn't use any, any blue at all. And here is the bolt. A rag on that. Um, it's pretty long for a 222. Like I said, this this whole gun, um, I ended up really wanting to make the whole receiver more compact. So this was, but this was the first one that I built like this, and it's a really accurate gun. Uh, you can see this this camming surface right here is what uh, cocks the gun. Uh, you know, the, the sear pin sits at the bottom, so when you open the bolt, it cocks the the firing pin. See the firing pin protruding out. Shoots probably a little farther than it should, but um, yeah, uh, it's got the classic style extractor on there. I make um, you know, just a just a hooked. Let me get that better in focus for you. Just like a, a hook style extractor. Uh, there's a little spring back here. I, almost all my guns use that, um, and then this one has a separate. Uh, the locking lugs are separate from the bolt body. So these were made, made separately and then attached to a bolt body. And there's a, a set screw right here to keep it all uh, together. Uh, but let me take out this little screw here, this screw here, and the firing pin will uh, come out the back. So here's that uh, firing pin. Um, you can see these two screws, right, there's two holes right here. Now those coincide with the two screws in the bolt body. So when you pull it back, it keeps everything very Pretty good spring in there. Um, so yeah, that's all that is. Uh, the uh, again, like I said, the the bolt body, uh, it's two pieces. Sometimes it's easier to do. Sometimes it's not. Uh, my new guns, I, I make it in one piece. That's just simpler. You know, you don't want if anything ever starts backing out, it's bad. I, I remember red lock tightening this in there, so it should not uh, come out unless I hit it with a torch. Go let you get a better look at that receiver. That's a honking long receiver. Um, you know, like I said, I, I really like this gun. It was the, it was the, one of the first ones that, of the style that I ever built. Um, and all this milling I did on my lathe, you can see all the holes aren't very, aren't the best. That's not the best work I've ever done. But for a, a, a milling attachment for a lathe, it looks pretty good. Uh, of course, later I ground, ground and added this barrel. Uh, before I leave the, the trigger, uh, I was going to show you how, how it does work. Um, there's a bar in here attached to the trigger. You see it right here. It presses this shape. Looks like this has come out and it's attached and it goes over like this. It's like a, I don't know what shape that is, but the, that's how it drops that, that, uh, that sear catch. And there's a spring under this part right here presses on this part right here. That's what keeps the tension on everything. Uh, of course, all these all these screws are 
Oh, that's a lot, a lot of, a lot of, uh, a, lot of a lot of tap and die set on that on that bad boy. It is just accurate. Now that 222 is just a really good cartridge, uh, but yeah, it's a very accurate gun. I did find an old group laying around. Um, it's about a, that's about a half inch five shot group with it, uh, with some 52 grain burger reloads. Like I said, this is just a really accurate gun, and that's the reason I keep it around. I still shoot it some, uh, but it's one of my favorite calibers. The, the 222 is, but yeah, I found that uh, taped taped them one of my benches over here. So, but let me let you get a good look at it. All the parts here, um, just the bolt. Um, I forgot where I got that crazy sling attachment, um, but no, it's a pretty simple gun. It, and and you know it, it's accurate. Again, but it's got just, it was too big, and you know, one of the main improvements I want to do was just to shrink down the length of the receiver. Um, but okay, let me put this thing back together. Well, there it is, guys. My uh, my first uh, uh, cock on open bolt action uh, rifle ever built. I said in, in 222. It was a booger to get back together. Um, <laughs> again, if, if you stuck around this long, please watch one of my other videos, my, some of my newer guns. Um, and of course, I. I Early on, I preferred a pistol grip because um, I wasn't into the woodworking. Just kind of the way it worked out. Um, but hey, guys, I appreciate you watching. Uh, leave comments, thumbs up, and uh, let me know. Appreciate it. Uh, be safe, and uh, God bless, guys. Thanks.